All right, Mike, with a, a game like Matt had tonight, five for five, three home runs, a pair of doubles as well. From a managerial perspective, what are you thinking when you're managing that game and when you're watching him? Um, just a joy to watch and be a part of it and see all the guys take the at-bats, but see the kind of day. That's a special day, clearly, for Matt. And, you know, he's put his time in. He's a professional hitter, and, you know, he wanted that last at-bat. And, um, I mean, that's, a, that's probably a somewhat historic day some, somehow. I'm not sure what that looks like, but um, not many of those running around. A complete 180 from the Matt Carpenter we saw back in April. In your opinion, what's been the biggest difference to this point? Um, I, you know, Liz, you're talking about a guy in his, what, seventh, eighth year in the league that has been a three-time All-Star. So I don't know there's a big difference other than just getting back to form that makes him who he is and um, takes good at bats. He's a mentally tough guy and um, good competitor and great preparer. So um, he just got back to getting his talent to where it was more consistent. Do you think, do you think there's ever a time even for a veteran where they buckle? to a batting average that is 140 when they can try to change too many things? I mean, you're dealing with humans, so you've got to, you know, be aware that if you're, you know, struggling and the scoreboard's real and people are paying attention to it and clearly we have, you know, the, the following we have um, from a media perspective. So, um, yeah, I think anybody's human is going to be aware of that and and, and um, have to compete with it. But the one thing I'm confident in with the guys that have been in here and you look at the way they're going about it, it says a lot about, again, their mental toughness, their self-belief, and, and their ability to kind of look back and channel the successes they've had and, and hold on to that and look back to get to that place. And here's seeing a clubhouse doing that. Can you outline the factors in taking him out when you did in the sixth inning versus maybe letting him stay in for another at-bat? Um, we, we had some communication about that even before that last at-bat. And looked like there might be some more damage out there. So that was an at-bat that made some sense. You know, beyond that, you know, he was... You know, it's a chance to get him out of the game and got double header tomorrow and just come out of the break and long day. And um, so it was just a couple of factors. We had good dialogue, good communication about it. And, um, and after the three and homer, it felt right for him and, and, uh, and for us. He, did, he didn't lobby to try to hit number four? No, he was, he was a pro. He was good about it. And, and um, you know, it could have been even more historic, but um, that was a pretty good day. How about the approaches your guys had against Lester, who obviously has been having a pretty good season? I mean, professional at bats. And like you say, he's, he's had a nice season, but um, we're more concerned about what we do and how we do and how we uh, prepare and execute. And, you know, the guys before the game just, you know, had a good plan. The plan's only as good as execution. They went out and mentally executed, and, you know, it took professional bats throughout the... The thing I was impressed about was not only the beginning, but throughout the day. You know, you just saw professional bat after professional at bat, and I um, really enjoyed the hunger of it. You know, the, the fact that regardless of the situation, they were competing. You know, a small thing like Ozuna in his last at bat, I mean, he's busting his tail down the line, got beat out of ball in a in a game that's uh, that's you know ten run lead. So um, I just appreciate the the hunger of what they're doing, how they're doing it, and and the focus of what what's going on. Carpenter's first four hits came on two strike counts, and then he hit a home run on the first pitch. You saw you seen him be more aggressive uh, than he has been in, in the past. Is he looking to hit more than you know? He's so selective, and it helps his game. But have you seen him hunt more? Um, more of a question for him, probably, but, but you know, the thing that's impressive about it, you know, you're talking about four two-strike <laughs> hits, so he's got confidence in being on a hit with deep in the count. I think you're starting to see that even more with our guys, starting to get pitches they can handle and, and do damage on, and if not, they're, they're getting a pitch they can, and whatever count that happens to be in. But uh, And then he's got the capability, obviously, he's done it in a couple lead-off scenarios where he's jumped on the first pitch, so... That's a tough matchup for any pitcher, knowing that this guy can take you early and this guy can take you deep, um, literally. <laughs> what does Jack show there with the bases loaded and two All-Stars coming up for the Cubs? Huge, huge. You know, he got himself into some trouble. You know, um, got the big lead, uh, got a lead, went back out. You know, ball handled up the infield, got the bases loaded. You got two, like you say, back-to-back All-Stars, and could have gone either way. And to his credit, um, instead of kind of getting out here he stayed present what he was doing and bared down and focused and you know got out of that inning and um we were talking to being pop like you know like to have a longer inning get him some rest and we that's a nice long inning to get him some rest <laughs> do you do you uh do you maybe make a visit out there if they're not limited or have yadi go out there if they're not limited right before that or yeah, I mean, you know, he's getting to a point. The thing that we get concerned about somewhat with Carlos last night, too, and, and Miles in, in the in the Cincinnati game a couple games ago is, you know, the pitch count was lower, but then when they start to get the longer pitch count innings where, you know, you're looking at 35 pitches or so and he's starting to waver. I mean, his pitch count in and of itself was fine, but 
you know, you're starting to ask a guy to get 40, 45 pitches in innings is a little, a little much of an ask, um, especially with maybe a younger guy. So, yeah, you know, Maddox went out and had a nice visit with him. And, you know, clearly Yachty's, you know, pitcher whisperer, so he can go out and get, help get guys through it. So. You usually see, like, a young guy maybe speed up an in inning. It did seem like Jack purposefully maybe even s- slowed down a bit. Jack's, Jack's, for me, the way he goes about it is mature beyond some of his years and the fact that he's he's got a slower heart rate um, based on what he does, and and, um, and he used it well there. To a good point, Derek, because he, you know, a lot of guys would have sped up and got a, the game would have sped up on him. He actually slowed it down and got refocused and started to execute even more. So, it's, I mean, that's a that's a really really good trait. Thank <laughs> you.